Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I'm Midnight Mule and this is the video for the 5% series for Game Week 12. The idea of this series is if you only pick players from the set that I'm going to show you, then you should do all right. You should finish top 5% globally, which means you'll do all right in your mini league. And it's very low effort. Some people just watch this series, pick from the players I'm showing them, and they do all right. And so I tried it last year. It's not what I wanted to do, but just for the season to try it, I only picked players from within the system and I finished within the top 2%, which was all right. I did all right in my mini leagues. And that's the whole point of this. You're not going to win the whole thing, but you'll do all right. I thought I'd start with this comment from FPL Tony. He posted this about a month ago when I did my Game Week 7 preview. And I assume it's a he. He said, with all respect, how's Fernandez is a good FPL player? So I keep saying, or often I've been saying, I think Fernandez is a good player. But the thing is, he is a good player. He's just playing for a team that was playing quite dysfunctionally. So my response was, look, if he doesn't do anything in the next few weeks, then I'll stand corrected. But I kind of thought he would. And then since then, he's got, what's that, 37 points. So he's been averaging over seven points a week. So he has been all right. Now, this is nothing special by me saying he's a good player. Anyone can see he's a good player. Whereas someone like Dominic Calvin-Lewin, he's not a good finisher. So at different times, Dominic Calvin-Lewin's been higher owned and more popular than Fernandes, but Fernandes is still a better bet. So there are certain players that go through a bad period, but they're still good players and they're pretty safe to have. So Haaland, for example, he's... I think he's got maybe two goals in the last five or six weeks. But goals are imminent. He is a good player. He is playing for a good team. If he doesn't get injured, then in the next few game weeks, he is going to score quite a lot of goals. Absolutely, you take that to the bank. Whether or not he's worth the money is another thing. And the money might be better spent elsewhere. But I don't think if you've got Haaland, you need to worry about, is he going to get goals? So talking to Fernandes, I thought I'd show you this. Supposing last week, game week 11, you played Palmer, he got you two points. And supposing you didn't have Fernandez and you didn't have Embremo. Fernandez got 17 points, Embremo got five points. And around the million mark, let's say, Fernandez was 9% owned, which means he was minus 1.53 points effectively. So if you didn't own him, because 9% of managers did own him, it was like you getting minus 1.53. Palmer got you two points so it's like for that position you got was that 0.47 points positive obviously it would have been better to have Fernandez than Palmer but that's the effect of having Palmer instead of Fernandez whereas in Bremo with five points he was 73% owned and that was effectively 3.65 points against you so even with your Palmer with two points that was minus 1.65 so if you had neither of these midfielders last game week, Embuemo did you a lot more damage than Fernandez did. And that is why when we go through this series, we try and get the players that we think are going to be most popular at the moment. Because if you own them, then they're not going to be hurting your rank. And hopefully that made some sense. So I'm going to run through the players in the system for game week 12. But before we do that, we'll quickly have a look at how they did in game week 11. So for Fabianski, he did well. He got nine points. And he's actually quite highly owned. Quite a few managers played him or had to play him. So that was good. Well done if you had him. And then for the other goalkeepers, Pickford got 11. The rest didn't do any. For the defenders, Masrael got 8. Aiton Nori 6. Robinson 6. Virgil van Dijk 6. Pedro Porro got 4. And then Anderson 7. Canate 6. Mikulenko 6. And then that's all for the defenders. For the midfielders... Fernandez got 17 as we saw, Salah 14, Smithrow 11, and Bremo 5, Garnacho 6, and then that's all. Regarding the forwards, Isaac got 11, Haaland 5, and then Raul 5, and that's all. So if you had Salah and captained him, or you had Fernandez and captained him, you would have got a green arrow. If you had Salah and Fernandez and captained someone else, you would have got a green arrow. If you had neither of those and you got a green arrow, then I think you did quite well. So hopefully you did all right, basically is what I'm saying. So for this coming game week, we'll start by looking at the goalkeepers. The way this works, there are four positions. So we're starting with goalkeepers. As I show you each player, the first player I show you 
is kind of the most important player for you to have. But you also want to take into consideration how good are they going to be? How good do I think they are? But generally speaking, the earlier goalkeepers you can get, the better. The earlier defenders, the better. Same with midfielders and forwards. So, for example, Raya, I'm saying he's a good player. I'm aware he's not kept a clean sheet for several game weeks. But the fixtures are changing. They've got Odegaard back now. I'm aware they've not got White. But I think he's a good player. And if you were wildcarding this week and you could afford to bring him in, I think he's worth having. The next one that's going to hurt your rank if you don't have him, and he does well, is Flecken. But I don't really like Flecken. I don't even know if he's got any clean sheets yet this season. So the fixtures aren't too bad. Everton, Leicester, then Villa, Newcastle aren't so good. Personally, I wouldn't be buying him. But if you've got him, you don't have to sell him. It's not worth a goalkeeper transfer. And if you've got at least one goalkeeper, I'd say don't waste a transfer on them unless you've got nothing else to do because it's so hard to find where the clean sheets are coming from. So Fabianski at 4 million, if he keeps playing, I think he's played maybe the last three game weeks, that's brilliant. Given that, goalkeepers tend to be very difficult to predict. So if you're wildcarding, I think going for Raya and Fabianski at the moment would be a good choice. But he's just bench fodder, and if he just always sits on your bench, that's all right as well. Sanchez, I see quite a few people bringing in Sanchez, but I'm also aware there's lots of Chelsea fans don't particularly like Sanchez. And they think he's a bit risky. So he could get dropped, but the manager says positive things about him. So um, he saves you 0.8 on Raya. If that 0.8 can be used to give you better midfielders or strikers, it's probably worth going Sanchez. But if you can afford to get Raya, that would be the better choice. And then Sales Forest have been very good with clean sheets. A way to Arsenal this game week, but then they've got Ipswich. That might be all right. But after that, they've got Man City and Man United. So possibly one clean sheet in the next four. And the less important keepers, like these are really not important keepers. Pickford, he's a bit hot and cold. He's been quite good recently. He could easily get a clean sheet against Brentford this game week. Then Wolves two game weeks later. And then Liverpool, which is the derby, of course. That's always difficult to call. There's a remote chance that it could be a nil-nil, but he's 4.9. That is very expensive. Then we have Henderson for Palace. Martinez for 5 million, but he's so low owned. If he does really well, he's really not going to hurt your score. So if Pickford and Martinez both got a clean sheet the same game week, Pickford does you more damage than Martinez. And then Ward, that represents any 4 million keeper that's not playing. Just bench fodder, stays on your bench. So defenders, Gvardiol's currently the most important defender in the system. Home games against Spurs could be a clean sheet, could easily get a goal against them. Away to Liverpool's not so good. Then they're at home to Forest, away to Palace. So upcoming fixtures are quite nice. He's highly owned, he's worth having. Eight Norrie's nice and cheap and quite highly owned. Wolves aren't very good at clean sheets. I think they kept one recently though. But he's got a chance of some attacking returns. But again, because he's popular... He's going to hurt you if he does well and you don't have him. Gabriel, I've made green. I'm saying he's a good player coming to a good run of fixtures. Worth having. Now, if I had the money for Gvardiol, Gabriel had to buy one. At the moment, I'd probably buy Gvardiol. Even though I think Gabriel may slightly outscore him. Because I could be wrong. And if I'm wrong, Gvardiol is the one that's going to hurt me. And then Robinson, like Aitnori, Nori, only 4.7 will get some clean sheets. Fulham's defence is better than Wolves. He will get potentially some attacking returns. So for myself, when it comes to, you'll see my video tomorrow, I think three of my playing defenders are out of these four because I'm going for those that are going to do me the least damage, basically. Might sound a bit boring, but I think it should work all right. Then Masril, I wouldn't buy him. He's a perfectly good player. He's got quite a few clean sheets so far this season. But United have got a new manager and we don't know who's going to be chosen, who's going to play where. So we're assuming Anana will be in goal, Fernandez a play. As for all the other players, it's hard to be certain who who's going to be chosen, basically. So I'd say don't buy Masrol at the moment, but it may be next week we'll be saying he's a great buy, or maybe that was a bullet dodged. So if you've got him, that's fine, but I think you pro I don't think it's worth buying him at the moment. Pedro Porro's dropping in popularity and he's away to Man City this week. So he's 
Definitely not a buy. If you've got him, he's all right to have, but he's not worth bringing in. Virgil van Dijk, massively growing in popularity. Southampton, then Man City, Newcastle, Everton. He's all right. If I had Virgil van Dijk, I'd be perfectly comfortable having him. He's all right. Like, same price as Cavadio. Personally, I'd be going for Cavadio at the moment. And then we have Canate, nice and cheap, 5.4. Aina, 4.8. But in the next three game weeks, he's got Arsenal, Man City and United all away. Almost certainly not clean sheets there. If you've got him, that's fine, but I wouldn't be bringing him in. So Trent, loads of managers have sold him because he's flagged. He went off injured last game week. There's a reasonably good chance he won't get 60 minutes against Southampton. So absolutely don't buy him. If you want to sell him to, to free up some funds, that's absolutely fine. If you want to hold him, that's OK as well. But there's a bit of risk because you're holding all that money. And so many managers have sold him now that if he does well, it's probably not going to hurt you much. And then Lewis, 4.9. But we're always worried about what minutes is he going to get. So he's currently in my team. I've not yet decided if I'm going to sell him this game week or not. But he's all right. But he's nice and cheap. That's the point. Only 4.9. Then Saliba, if Arsenal start keeping clean sheets, of course his popularity go up. But at the moment... He won't hurt you at all if you don't have him, but he's quite a good defender. And then Mikolenko is just bench fodder, Anderson's bench fodder. And then the less important defenders, Konsa. So he's not highly owned now. If he does well, he won't hurt you. But three of the next four are at home to Palace, Brentford and Southampton. He might do all right in those. Personally, I wouldn't be buying him, but if I had him, I'd be comfortable keeping him. Howard Bellis, bench fodder, Faust, bench fodder, Van der Berg, bench fodder, Greaves, bench fodder, I think he's flagged. Van der Ven, injured, we don't know if he's going to be back, but in any case, it's a way to Man City, so he's not going to be a great choice anyway. Don't buy him, because he's flagged. If you've got him, he's all right to hold, but if you want to move him on, that's fine as well. And then Burns suspended this game, week, so obviously don't buy him, but he's only 4.4. If you've got him... You could keep hold of him. If you've got Byrne and Van der Ven, then I think it's probably worth making a transfer unless you're sure your other three defenders are definitely playing. For the midfielders, Salah is now by far the most important player in the game. That is to say, he's the player that's going to hurt you the most if he does well. Now, it's not worth taking lots of hits to bring him in and it's not worth selling really good players to bring him in. But if you can get to him without too much pain... It may be worth doing. Palmer is also a good player. He's currently flagged, but he has been seen in training, so it's assumed he's going to be all right to play. Embremo is a good player. I know some managers are selling him, but I think they're doing it because he's a fair bit of money, 7.9, and they're moving him to either Salah or Palmer or Fernandes, for example, who are all a little bit more expensive. But if you've got him and you can afford to keep him, I think it's worth keeping him at the moment. Rogers, is a good player. Villa have got some nice fixtures coming up and he's only 5.4 million. Fernandes is a good player, only 8.4 million. We're assuming that he's going to be getting good points in the next few game weeks with the new manager. So he's worth having as well. But it's going to be very difficult to afford these five and Haaland. So if you want these five on the screen just now, you almost certainly don't have Haaland. And then Smithrow, he's popular. He does quite well every two or three weeks and he's only 5.7 million. So my five midfielders are currently on the page at the moment. I've got five of those six. So as you can see, what I'm doing is going for who's popular and trying to pick those who would hurt me if I didn't have them. And carrying on to the midfielders. Saka is a good player. Once he starts scoring points, he's going to shoot up and he's going to be on the first screen. He's going to be very popular. At the moment, he's not quite high enough owned to hurt you if he does well. But he is a good player. If you've got him, great. He's worth having. Personally, I probably wouldn't bring him in because he's flagged. But he's probably going to be all right. But at time recording, we don't know that for sure. But if you, want to, if you wanted to switch, I wouldn't switch in Bremo for Saka personally. But I know some people are doing that because they're freeing up money. And that's kind of okay. Saka will almost certainly outscore in Bremo. But there'll be some weeks in Bremo does better. And if you haven't got him, that's going to hurt you. 
So Semenyo, very good player, fixtures are okay. He's currently flagged. And at time of recording, we don't know if he's playing or not. If you've got him, he's absolutely fine to have. But I don't think it's worth buying him because we don't know what his status is. So Johnson, quite a nice player, but he's a way to Man City. He's 6.8. And he's the sort of person I could understand you selling to move on to Saka or Fernandez or something like that if you had the money. Or even, even to Smith Rowe to free up some money. Smith Rowe's going to hurt you more if you haven't got him than Johnson will. But Johnson's all right, but don't expect much this coming game week. And then Sun. Sun is a much better player than Johnson. Sun could get a lot of points in the next few game weeks, but he's really not very highly owned at the moment, so you don't need to fear not having him. Garnacho, he's a very good player, and it may be with the new manager, he starts getting loads of points, and we're all going to want to bring him in. But at the moment, you don't need to fear him. If you've got him, he's fine. Luis Diaz, always nervous about his minutes, but when he gets good minutes, he does tend to get good points. But again, he's not going to hurt you. Some more midfielders that were popular, but aren't going to hurt you. McNeil. So he's been flagged. He didn't play last game week. Don't know if he's playing this game week. Absolutely don't buy him. You don't have to sell him. He's only 5.7. But if you've got him and you want to sell him for someone who was on a previous page, especially if they're green, that's all right. Gordon, good player at home to West Ham, could get some nice points in the next few game weeks, but he's not going to hurt you. Bowen, good player playing for a very poor team, but again, he's not going to hurt you. Winks, nice and cheap, just bench fodder, dibbling, bench fodder. Regarding the forwards, so I'm saying Haaland's a good player. I know there's a lot of content creators who have either already sold him or talking about selling him or maybe giving him one more week, etc., the reality is in the next four game weeks, he could easily get five, six, seven goals. So I've got him. I'm currently intending to keep him. The only reason I'd sell him, apart from getting injured, would be if so many managers dumped him, it just made sense for me to get someone else in because someone else is going to hurt me more. But at the moment, he's the most important forward at the moment and he's a good player and he's going to hurt you if you haven't got him. But you can't afford to get all the good popular players. So decisions need to be made. If I was wildcarding, I don't know that I would get him. I may well not go Haaland and just make the rest of my team really good popular players. But personally, I wouldn't be taking hits to get rid of Haaland. I've seen people taking hits online to move Haaland on for Salah and do some other swaps. That's not for me because it's Haaland. So would... He's the second most important forward at the moment because he's highly owned. He's away to Arsenal this game week, but he does seem to score more often than every other game. Next game week's at home to Ipswich. After that, people may start getting rid of him, but at the moment, he's pretty good to have. So Kuna's a new entry because he's now more popular. He's the third most important forward at the moment. Wolves have some very nice um, games coming up. He may not get anything away to Fulham because Fulham defensively have been all right recently. But he is a good player. And if he wasn't yellow for being new player, he would be green for being a good player. So if you wanted to get Kuna, that's fine. A lot of people have been selling Haaland to get, for example, Kuna and then swapping maybe McNeil for Salah. If that's not a hit, that's probably worth it. It might end up being a little bit sideways, though. Obviously, it depends what Haaland and Salah does. Isaac is a good player. Newcastle, the last few game weeks have been better. Isaac has been getting his points. If he stays fit, he's a good player. He's going to end up being a very good player. And he may end up being the most important forward. But at the moment, he's not. But he's good. So if, if you had two or three of these as your strikers, I'd say that's pretty good. And then Solanke... He's not going to hurt you. People are selling him. Away to Man City this game week. Probably not going to get much there. So Welbeck. Brighton have got some very nice fixtures coming up. But he's not super highly owned. So he's not going to hurt you much. Gel Pedro isn't in this system at the moment. He may well be next game week. Depending how many people I think are going to be having him. But at the moment Welbeck's the only forward in here from Brighton. Could well get some good points. But if he does well he's not going to hurt you. Jackson, good player, but he's on four yellow cards, which means one more and he gets a suspension. If you've got him, he's 
absolutely fine to have. Personally, I wouldn't be bringing him in at the moment, though. And I'd rather have Kuna at 6.8 or even Wood at 6.6. Or Welbeck at 6 probably than Jackson, but Jackson is a good player. And then Raul Jimenez, he's only 5.8 million. He's not super highly owned, but for that price, he's pretty good. Are we at home to Wolves this game week? And then week after next, at home to Brighton. Watkins, undoubtedly, he is a good player. Three of the next fours at home to Palace, Brentford, Southampton. Good player, good fixtures, but he's the second most expensive forward at 9 million and he's not highly owned. So if he does well, he's not going to hurt you. If you wanted to swap Haaland for him, you could do, but there'd be better choices. So probably not worth bringing him in, but I'm absolutely saying he's a good player. If you want him, that's absolutely fine. Vardy didn't play last game week. He's still flagged. Don't know if he's going to play this game week, but it's at home to Chelsea anyway. If you've got him, he's fine to sell. Absolutely don't buy him. Havertz is, I've got him as an okay player. He's a good player, but he's so low owned at the moment, he's not going to hurt you. Calvert-Lewin, he's not a good player, but a cut two, three weeks ago, he became very popular, which is why we added him to the system. But he gets lots of chances, but he doesn't take them. Totally not worth having. And then Cannon represents any four and a half mil forward who doesn't even play. Just bench fodder. So I'm going to look at the benching order now, starting with goalkeepers. The way this works, I'm going to show you all the keepers. The first keeper you see that you've got, I'm suggesting is the keeper that goes on your bench. So if you've got Ward or any four million player that doesn't play, he's on your bench. And I'm suggesting Henderson, Sales, Pickford, Fabianski, Flecken, Sanchez, Martinez and Raya. So if you've got Raya, you're playing him. So looking at the other players, the way this works, the first player you see that you've got, I suggest is position three on your bench, the next one position two, and the last one position one. And this isn't just based on predicted points. A lot of work goes into trying to think who's going to get the points and who's going to hurt you. So there is enough logic behind this where I can say if you just blindly follow this, you'll probably do all right. So Burn, he's not even playing, so of course he's position three on your bench. And a forward who's not going to play. Four and a half million forward, they're on your bench. Dibbling, Winks, Greaves, Harwood Bellis, Van der Ven, Faust, Ayner, Van der Berg, Pedro Porro, Konza, Mikolenko, Anderson, Calvert-Lewin, Vardy, Johnson, McNeil, Mazrell, Canate, Robinson, Aintnore, Wood, Garnacho, Semenyo, Bowen, Lewis, Welbeck, Raul, Solanke, Saliba, Virgil van Dijk, Trent Alexander-Arnold, who will hopefully play or not at all, but he's, that's where I think he should go. So if I had Trent and Virgil van Dijk and I could only play one, I would actually be starting Trent. And it's Gabriel, Gvardiol, Luis Diaz, Gordon, Jackson, Smithrow, Rogers, Embremo, Kuna, Sun, Havertz and Watkins. Six players aren't on here and they're the captaincy choices. So potential captain's choices. We've got six good ones this game week. Salah, I suspect, would be close to being the most popular captain. Maybe he will be the most popular captain. I'm currently intending to captain Salah for sure. But Haaland is also a very good choice. At home to Spurs. Spurs are quite good at leaking goals sometimes. Palmer's a good choice. Isaac's a good choice. Saka's a good choice. Fernandez is a good choice. Any of those six could comfortably get over 10 points. Possibly all of them would get over 10 points. So if you can choose one as your captain, one as your vice captain, I think that's a good cho idea, a good choice. If you don't want to do that or you can't do that, then any of the forwards or midfielders that were green on the previous pages, they're also a good choice. As for the background picture, I've got a little black Volvo. I don't use it much and yet I've just paid a grand to have something fixed on it because a couple of the injectors went. And most of the time it just sits at the back of the house and it actually does have moss growing on it. And had it underneath a chestnut tree recently and a little tree started coming out of the boot as well. So it's really not in a good state and I've probably spent more on it in the last year than it's worth by a long way. So in good money after bad and that's something you can do in FPL as well. There's a player you spent time and money on and you're just too scared to get rid of them. That is not the right thing to do. You cut your losses. So with my car, I should be cutting my losses, I think. 
there we have it. I hope that made some sense. Thank you very much for watching. I'll try and answer any of your questions. And remember, this series is about trying to avoid the pain. If we have the players that are going to hurt us, the pain really shouldn't be too bad. And we really should do all right in the FPL. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.